Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. We're doing an 8-4 Battle for Zendikar draft. Opened Endless One, which is a great way to start off a draft. Leaves you completely open, and it's a powerful, colorless card. Good early, good late. Better late, but still good. Anything else good in this pack? Uh, nothing else really worth starting with. Plated Crusher is strong, but you don't really want to start with a green spell, much less a triple green spell, although I'm one of the people that really doesn't care about playing green so much, um, If you, especially if you can't make another archetype work. Core Entanglers, good ally, decent one to start with, I suppose. Sludge Crawler's not the best first pick, but it's a good card, and Outnumber and Tightening Coils aren't that great either. I think it's a pretty easy endless one there. Okay, well... Follow-up pick of Radiant Flames is okay with me. Even if you're playing it as like a three-mana Pyroclasm, it's pretty strong in a token-based format such as this. Um, other notable picks in here, Myers Malice, Eyeless Watcher, Career Griffin, Ruin Processor. Uh, but I would definitely say Radiant Flames is the most powerful card remaining in this pack, so we'll take it. Okay, well, Exert Influence actually pairs reasonably well with Radiant Flames since they both are converged spells that would motivate you to at least splash a third color. Um, no good red picks. Blue red is very powerful. I would definitely say Exert Influence is the strongest card remaining in this pack. I think we'll just take it. There's really nothing else worth taking. Transgress is a good card. I think Exert Influence just blows it out of the water, though. And even if you can only play Radiant Flames and Exert Influence as two colored uh, Converge spells, still good. Okay. So there's tunning, Tunneling Geopede. Typically, if you're playing Blue-Red, you would prefer to be more of a Devoid deck, but... Salvage Drone is pretty weak. There's also an Invoker. Invoker is good. Geopede is, is really good too, though. I feel like you get more shots at seeing Invoker because it's common. Tunneling Geopede is uncommon, so you don't get to see as many. And it can just win the game. It really can. You can just sit back on it on stalled board states and just go to town. Like, if we pick up, like, Kozilek Sentinels, which can hold back, you know, some reasonable army stuff, then Tunneling GOP just kind of goes to town. You just drop lands and win. I think we're going to take GOP here. I guess Invoker survives Radiant Flames, but I'm still going to take GOP. Okay. Uh, okay. This is interesting. Titan's Presence is... A good card to take early, especially if we do legitimately end up in, in blue-red. Um, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to find colorless creature cards. Unfortunately, Endless One does not work so well with Titan's Presence, but I don't really like Molten Nursery all that much. I think it's okay. It's better than I originally thought, but still not that great. And Vestige is fine. I think we have more opportunities to see that later. I think it's a pretty pretty easy Titan's Presence. It's also just colorless. So, considering we haven't really fully established ourselves into a color yet, I think Titan's Presence is, is good here. Okay, Merc Strider actually pairs very well with Titan's Presence, since Titan's Presence exiles. Um, so, it fuels your... Basically, Titan's Presence end of turn... Reveal Merc Strider, kill something, play Merc Strider, bounce your other thing. It's just good. It's very synergistic. I like Wave Wing Elemental too, actually, but like I said, if we end up blue-red, you're going to want some Devoid. Okay, another shot at Wave Wing Elemental. I'm going to take this one. I think this card's just good. I uh, underrated it early in the format, and I just like it a whole lot more now. So, over the Shatter Skull Recruit, over the Rush of Ice. Seems fine to me. Whoops. 
Uh, let's see here. Okay. Opportunity for Rush of Ice now. Pathway Arrows is better sideboard card. Eyeless Watch is a strong green card, but uh, I've got some, at this point, I've got some fairly powerful blue cards, so I'd like to stick stick uh, with it for now. I can take this Rush of Ice. It's fine. It's okay to have one. Usually you don't want two. Uh, hmm. All right, we can take Retreat to Valakut. I don't think the card's particularly good, but I guess I could take Looming Spires. Looming Spires on a Tunneling Geopede is not bad. Four power, first strike. Plus deal one damage to you. Retreat has not been so good for me, but yeah, I guess Looming Spires is, is fairly playable. All right. I think we're going to end up with enough cards in our deck where just taking the Spires there. Like I said, I don't really like, I don't know, I don't really like Retreat to Valakut that much. Granted, my my sample size of playing with it is fairly low, but I I think it's it's kind of a card that is just a bit underpowered. Cascade here is nice though. All right, anticipates a great late pickup here. All right, we'll take the salvage drone. I don't think it's a very good card, but neither of the other cards in here are something I'm really all that interested in. Although we only have a couple red cards at the moment could mean we're supposed to go into a different color. There's a chance of that. But Radiant Flames is quite strong, so I would prefer to be able to play uh, red if I can. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. Not taking Prism Array here. It's very much just between... Sky Spawner and Nettle Drone, and I think because we're not guaranteed to be able to play red, I think we just really want the Sky Spawner here. Nettle Drone is very good. Um, and Nettle Drone's better with the Titan's presence, but Sky Spawner is just... Like I said, we're 100% we're in blue, so Sky Spawner is just going to be something that... It's one of the more powerful blue cards, for sure. So let's let's just take it here pretty happily. Passing a Nettle Drone, but considering we got a strong blue card, I'm, I'm very much okay with that. Okay, Kozilek Sentinel here is, is okay. Otherwise, it's Tightening Coils, which is not that great. Yeah, Kozilek Sentinel's fine here. Has synergy with all of our other colorless spells. And uh, I guess technically works with Titan's Presence, but not so well. And otherwise, it's like Slab Hammer for random Skyline Cascade, Looming Spire, Synergy. I guess Tightening Coils is, is fine. We don't really have enough evasion to really want Tightening Coils in this deck, but Coast Like Sentinel is, is actually pretty good. All right. Complete Disregard's cool, but currently don't have any fixing. I, I would rate Evolving Wilds fairly high since... Evolving Wilds uh, would let us maybe splash a third color to turn on Exert Influence and Radiant Flames into three-color territory. Otherwise, so it's Coral Home Guy versus Spell Shrivel. I'm going to take the Spell Shrivel here. Just getting more colorless spells for our uh, codes like Sentinel right now, but could find a Nettle Drone at some point. Coral Home Guide's fine, too. It's pretty good with Tunneling Geopede. Probably good with Endless One. But we'll take Spell Shrivel. All right, here's our Evolving Wilds. I think we're just going to take that. Otherwise, it's like Breaker of Armies or Waving Elemental. Um, I guess technically Fertile Thicket turns on your Converge as well. But I think I'd rather have Evolving Wilds. And possibly playing, depending on, currently we're not very color intensive at all, which makes playing a third color splash for our Radiant Flames and Exert Influence just a, a lot easier. But we'll definitely take Evolving Wilds here. There's nothing we're giving up either. It's kind of nice. A second Wave Wing Elemental, I guess, wouldn't be wouldn't be bad here, but we're not going to take it. All right. Kozilek's Channeler is great Titan's Presence Synergy. Um, don't have a lot of mana sinks otherwise, but it does have random Kozilek Sentinel synergy as well, and it's just a good card. Not much else we're looking for. Slide Runner's fine. This isn't really the deck that, like, I would play it, but this 
def this isn't really the deck that needs it. Definitely taking Channeler. Okay, I guess we can take Cloud Manta. It's not... Uh, uh, maybe we take Boiling Earth here. I guess we already have Radiant Flames, which makes the Boiling Earth a slightly less attractive pick. Um, Cloud Manta doesn't survive Radiant Flames. It has Evasion. It makes future Kozilek Sentinel picks better. Having something on the ground that blocks while you fly over top is, is typically good. Fire Mantle Mage isn't really what this deck wants. So yeah, Boiling Earth versus Cloud Manta. I think I'm going to take the Manta here. Like I said, I think I would have taken... I would have taken the Boiling Earth if I didn't have Radiant Flames. All right, Blighted Gorge versus Oracle of Dust versus Vestige. I think we want the Vestige. Works better with the Titan's Presence and the Sentinel. It's a good. It's actually just a good card. I've come to like Vestige quite a bit. Fits our curve a little bit better, too. I think Blighted Gorge is, is good. I actually like Blighted Gorge. And it's almost a guarantee at this point we're going to be able to make... We're going to have enough playables, so there actually is a reasonable argument to take Blighted Gorge, but I'm going to take Vestige anyway. All right, not really interested in any of these cards. I guess Belligerent Whiptail, maybe. It's more likely we'd play that than like a Cohort, but I don't think we're going to play any of them. We're not going to play Brilliant Spectrum either. All right, Cascade number two. Sure. All right, Looming Spires, number two. I'm not going to play a Devastator. I guess Devastator is something to ramp into with Channeler. I, I guess I, I really don't need a second Looming Spires. I already have more than enough tap lands. All right, I'll take the Devastator here. I mean, it does work with Titan's Presence. We have a Channeler to ramp into it. I never play it. I don't think it's particularly good, but... All right, here's a pretty easy Scour. Sure, we'll just cut the red card, I think. Okay, Recruit's playable. It's not great for our deck, but don't need the Whip Tail. I'd prefer to not play the Salvage Drones. I just really don't think they're that good. Especially since we don't really have much at all in the, the processing department. So what does this deck need? Um, we have the means to splash for three color, so that's, that's a good sign for Exert Influence and Radiant Flames. Um, we have a decent amount of creatures. We could use some more. Rush of Ice counts as a creature. So really we have... I guess technically Exert Influence kind of counts as a creature. In a way. Maybe like half a creature. Um, so we could use some more creatures. Our removal is looking decent. Titan's Presence, Radiant Flames, Spell Shrivel. Exert's kind of removal too. Uh, Rush of Ice, Scour. Drana. Well, she's worth tickets, so I should take her. Otherwise, I guess Pilgrim's Eye would be really good for this deck to actually turning on converge but i think drawn is actually worth a decent amount of tickets i should check well she's only worth i guess about three and a half tickets which isn't a ton i would want pilgrim's eye for this deck but three and a half tickets it's an eight four mm, i don't know that's tough hopefully we just find another pilgrim's eye or another evolving wilds I do think Pilgrim's Eye is, is pretty decent, though, for turning on that Converge. I'm still going to take Drana. Okay, Horribly Awry does something early, but we got to take Sky Spawner here. It's just so good. Sky Spawner is a fantastic card. Also makes our Devastator better. Okay. Horribly Awry would be good, too. But pretty easy Sky Spawner. Okay. Now we have Processor Assault, which I don't love, but how do we, how many, we have Spell Shrivel, Titan's Presence, uh, Scour, and Salvage Drones if I wanted to play Processor Assault. I don't need a second Spell Shrivel though, so I guess we will take it. Right now it's is pretty low chance that it's going to make the deck, but if we can find some more, if we can find any in Jest, I'd consider it. Okay, don't want a second Devastator, I don't think. Tightening Coils isn't great for us, but might be good enough. We 
We have two Sky Spawners, a Cloud Manta, and a Wave Wing Elemental. So we have a, a fair amount of evasion. Otherwise, Coral Hum Guide. I guess it makes Devastator unblockable, Channeler, Endless One, Vestige. Something to do early. I guess we could use some more creatures. All right, I'll take the guide, I guess. I think Tightening Coils would be okay here, too. But I, I'm in the market for a few more creatures, and Coral Hum Guide's okay. Beats down early. All right, well, if I can't make the first Processor Assault work, I doubt I'm going to be able to make the second one work. I'm going to take Cloud Manta here, which now, I guess, makes the Tightening Coils a better pick there than the Coral Hum Guide, but that's that's still okay. Evasion is always going to be good. Ulamog's Despoiler. I don't really like this card. I don't really think I need a second Spell Shrivel, although it does turn on Processor Assault. I still I still think with two Spell Shrivels and a Titan's Presence, we don't have enough. We just don't have enough to turn on. And Scour. We don't have enough to turn on the Processor Assault. Could take Cryptic Cruiser. It's basically a Hill Giant with possible upside that we're not very likely to have. Don't need a second Scour. Don't really want a despoiler. I don't think this card's very good. We have enough in game where I don't think we need it either. Ah, I guess we'll take Spell Shrivel number two. I, I don't really want it, but. Okay, Incubator Drone's actually a very good card. Really happily taking that here. Just puts a bunch of bodies out there. Don't really need a second Devastator. Don't really want Oracle of Dust. I guess we'll take it, though. All right, Blighted Cataract's actually just good. Could take Fertile Thicket. It's just uh, turns on Converge as well as digs for a land. But I think Cataract's just too strong to pass up here. Okay, Cloud Manta number three. I think we, we actually are making it happen. At this point, I really regret not taking the... Tightening Coils. I didn't realize I was going to get so many flyers. None of these cards really matter. Oh, got the Tightening Coils back. Well, that's fantastic news. It's absolutely making our deck. Maybe I should have hated the focus there, actually. Um, okay, so we have some cuts to make, which is a good place to be. We have enough creatures. We're going to make a uh, uh, third color splash work for Radiant Flames and Exert Influence. Um, we can make this deck very, very uh, not color intensive. Very easily, actually. So let's cut the Recruit, I think. Probably cut the Oracle, too. I just don't think that we are in need of it. It it does have a good... It, it's got good toughness, though. Like, it blocks on the ground well to let our Cloud Mantis fly over. Hmm. Maybe that is a, a reasonable card in this deck. Probably don't need two spell shrivels. Processor Assault's not happening. We just don't have enough to support it. Titan's Presence, two spell shrivels, a scour. I, I'm even... I'm, at this point, I'm pretty likely cutting scour. I don't even think we need to, to main deck that. It's just not necessary. Although we are a bit removal light, I guess. We're a little removal light. Tightening Coils is, is fine removal for... The, it's pretty strong removal for our deck, actually. Um, probably don't need two Spell Shrivels. Basically, it's just to turn on Incubator Drone. Yeah, I think we're not going to run two. Still, I, I, we definitely want to run 18 lands. We didn't get much in the card advantage department, unfortunately, but we do have Blighted Cataract, which is definitely a form of card advantage and highly motivating to play. 18 lands, and I'm going to play all of these spell lands, I think, even though we kind of need our resources, I, I think that's fine. We're going to cut Scour. It's a better sideboard card. I think 7 mana to exile anything is a bit pricey most of the time. Uh, so one more cut, and then we're good. I could cut the guide. I kind of like, I kind of want all my Cloud Mantis, but like going Radiant Flames into Cloud Manta into Cloud Manta is a really nice turn progression. I actually kind of want to keep the Oracle of Dust. Like I said, it blocks well for our flight flying guys. 
Merc Strider doesn't actually seem all that good for our deck, but yeah, I mean, it, it basically just works well with Titan's Presence, but I think actually two Sky Spawners, Incubator Drone, Vestige, Channeler, Oracle, Devastator. Yeah, we, we have enough to support Titan's Presence without Merc Strider, probably. I guess we can cut Merc Strider. It's really not that great for our deck. Two ways to to turn it on. No ingest. Other than that, four mana for two toughness is typically pretty bad. The exception being Cloud Manta because, of course, it has flying. So it gets in. I don't want to cut Devastator, I don't think. It's just high rewards for Channeler and running 18 lands and Scion tokens and such. All right, I think we're going to cut Merc Strider. All right, I guess we'll cut Merc Strider. That's, that's fine. Oracle's just, yeah, there for the blocking. Five mana blocker, I guess, isn't great, but whatever. Nothing else is really catching my, my fancy here. Okay, so we're not color intensive at all, so we're definitely splashing a third color very easily. Evolving Wilds, Looming Spires, Double Cascade, and I guess we'll run one forest probably, just as a three. What are you, crazy? So, oh, I got less than a minute. So this is 10, 7, 2. Oh, we are light and red. All right, 10, 7, 2. Sounds good to me. Here's our deck. Seems decent to me. I wouldn't rate this deck super highly. I'd probably rate it about... Mm, I don't know, actually. Six and a half out of ten, I'll give it. Maybe six out of ten. It's not insane. Seems decent, though. We'll see how it runs. We'll see it run one.